So this video begins the first in a series uh, of videos about electric circuits and the resistors in the circuits and how do we calculate the currents and voltages associated with those circuits. So first of all, we're going to identify and define what a circuit is and the various symbols that we'll be using in this circuit. Okay, um, we'll also be talking about two things here, voltmeters and ammeters, which measure our voltage and our current. Uh, and then I'm going to introduce you to Ohm's Law, which is the primary formula that we're going to be using in this unit. And um, the last one is uh, how we calculate power in an electrical sense. Okay, so first off, an electric circuit requires two things. Okay, it must have a closed loop for the electrons to run around and it needs a battery or something that we're going to call an electromotive force that forces the electrons to move. Okay, electromotive force, even though it has the word force in it, it's kind of a misnomer. It's not talking about force. Uh, we'll abbreviate it simply as EMF. Um, but it's really just saying another way to create a voltage differential or a voltage for our circuit. So this is an example of a circuit. Okay, on the left here, we basically have a battery. Okay, so this is our battery over here. Whoops. Okay, so over here we have the battery. Not writing. Okay. Okay, on the left hand side here is the battery, and over here are two resistors. Okay, I just label them with a resistance R to illustrate what a circuit is. Okay, so the battery is what's going to force the electrons to move. Okay, um, and although the electrons are going to leave the negative side of the battery um, and go counterclockwise, we're going to be using um, current as leaving the positive side. Okay, remember we talked about conventional current. So positive charges leave the positive side of the battery. So current is actually going to be going in this direction. Okay. And notice I have a closed loop, okay? Uh, there's no breaks in my loop anywhere. Okay, so we saw a couple of symbols there. Okay, we saw the symbol for a battery and uh, this rectangle symbol for a resistor. There's another symbol that's also used, uh, and that's the zigzaggy uh, picture uh, for a resistor. Okay, other symbols we'll run across are switches, connecting wires, lamps, and over here we have several different symbols for ground, okay? If you look at real schematics, which is what a circuit drawing is, you'll sometimes see these um, pictures for ground, okay? Ground basically just means that any wire that's directly connected to the ground symbol, you can call that wire to have an absolute voltage of zero, okay? Um, everything else will uh, be a s different voltage compared to there, but that uh, symbol basically says we're going to call this zero. Okay, we're going to be using two different uh, instruments to measure voltage and current, okay? The voltmeter is uh, represented as a circle with a V in it, and the ammeter is a circle with an A in it, okay? They measure clearly voltage and current separately, okay? Ideally, and that's pretty much the types of voltmeters and ammeters we're going to be working with, ideally the voltmeter will have infinite resistance, Okay, because it has infinite resistance, absolutely zero current will flow through that voltmeter. Okay, similarly with an ammeter, all the current, because it measures current, all of the current must flow through it for it to be able to count the electrons as it goes by. Okay, and so the ammeter will uh, be an ideal one, and that's again what we'll be using, will represent zero resistance, okay? So remember, voltmeters have infinite resistance, and meters have zero resistance. So that brings me to the primary formula that we're gonna be using, okay? We'll be using this formula over and over and over again. It's just con constantly reusing this formula. And what it basically says, does is Ohm's law relates voltage and current to resistance. Okay, the formula is pretty straightforward. Okay, it says the voltage uh, differential across a resistor, so that's the delta V, 
Okay, that voltage difference is going to equal the current through the resistor times the value of that resistance, R. Okay, and this will be true for every single resistor that we go through. Okay, in that it says the voltage differential across the resistor or the voltage drop across the resistor is going to equal current times resistance. So here's a problem to practice, okay? I have an 8 ohm resistor um, and it has a current that I measure to be half an amp flowing through it, okay? Do this problem at home. Feel free to pause this or look at the PowerPoint slides. We'll talk about this in class. The next formula we have is power, okay? Power was previously defined as work per unit time, okay? I know that units have been, you know, several months since we talked about power, but power is the rate that work is being done, or work divided by time, okay? In the electrostatic unit, okay, we discovered that work is equal to Q delta V. Yes, there's a minus sign, but let's ignore the minus sign for now, okay? Um, so if I make the substitution, I end up with power is equal to Q delta V over T, or rearranging simply Q over T times the delta V, okay? Um, remembering that current is defined as the rate of charge per time, or amount of charge per unit time, I can make that substitution and I find that power is equal to current I times uh, V, or delta V voltage. Okay, and that's the formula that I, uh, in the past, called the poison IV formula, uh, in case you need to memorize it, okay? Power is equal to I times V. Okay. At times, we may need to make various substitutions, okay? Um, because it may be easier to work with power in a slightly different form, okay? So what I do is I uh, combine the power formula with Ohm's law, and substitute either for V or I in the first equation, okay? If I do that, I end up with two slightly different formulas for power, okay? I have a power is equal to I squared R, or power is equal to V squared over R. It doesn't matter which formula you use, okay? In some cases, you know, if you want to keep it simple, you can simply calculate I times V, okay? And then calculate V equals IR, okay? Uh, and so that's fine, okay? However, in some comparative cases, maybe the I squared R or V squared over R could be a little bit easier to use, okay? So, so here's an example, okay? How much energy does a 60 watt light bulb use in one hour, okay? Well, one hour is not my standard unit of time, so I need to convert that into seconds, and that's what I've done over here on the left-hand side, okay? But on the right-hand side, I basically said, well, power is equal to work over time, okay? Um, so it's 60 watts, okay? And how much work has the vent, um, light bulb done? Well, that's what we're calculating, okay? How much does the light bulb use, okay? How much work was done generating that light, okay? So if it's a 60-watt light bulb, uh, after doing the math, I find that this light bulb has used 21,600 joules in an hour, okay? Something you could do is can dis do a calculation and say, well, how much does that 21,600 joules actually cost my family to run that light bulb for an hour, okay? And if you go and pull up your electric bill, you'll find it costs you a few cents to run that light bulb for an hour. Okay, so here's a practice problem, okay? It's the same white light bulb, okay? I have a 60-watt light bulb, and I connect it to a 120-volt outlet, okay? What is the current through the bulb, and what is the resistance of the bulb, okay? So do those calculations using the formulas, and um, we'll talk about that next class. Thank you.